Oh, and we just went anyway. Well, there we go. I didn't map it. We did it. That was amazing. What's going on, guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. We're going to be jumping into Naya Tokens. Before that, I just want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe. I'm not going to harp on it. I do this every video. Just make sure you subscribe. We do have giveaways here and things like that, and subscribing is a great way to enter and get your hands on some free cards. But let's talk about today's deck. It is Naya Tokens, so the idea is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to be spitting out some tokens, whether that be treasure tokens uh, with things like Prosperous Innkeeper or the 2-2 two -two that gets spit out of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, or we might be putting out tokens like creatures. So we've got things like the 1-1 one -one that taps for green. Uh, we have got, let's see, Asika's Chariot spits out a couple 2-2s. Two we've got the Restoration, which spits out some 1-1s. One -ones. And we've got Reckoner Bankbuster, which spits out a 1-1 one -one that can crew as though it had a power of 3. Uh, which is super helpful because the Reckoner needs crew three. So uh, there's very much a vehicle sub theme. We've got the Chariot. We do have the Bank Buster. Uh, both of those are really key cards in this deck because, again, we want to copy those tokens. We need to draw some cards and spit out extra tokens. They kind of do it all. Uh, now, we do have, obviously, um, the Showdown of the Skulls is going to allow us later in the game to be able to kind of refill and hopefully power up some of our board. Uh, the Wandering Emperor is here as a two of as well. Just a really powerful card. Can spit out tokens herself, uh, but as well can exile some stuff, gain some life, and throw some counters around. And then, of course, Portable Hole for a little bit of removal along with the Fateful Absence, the Outline li Outland Liberator uh, to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Of course, there are quite a number of enchantments that we expect to see uh and so this is certainly a good addition to the deck uh, especially on that nightbound side we do have the skyclave apparition as a four of to deal with the opponent's uh things whatever we see uh that they've got coming down uh and in general i think this is a really efficient deck i'm really excited to try this one out i have played a game or two with it uh and found some pretty good luck i did take this from mtg arena zone um and i apologize i don't know who the actual deck creator is uh it was just on their website as one of the cards that we could play that being said it does come with a full sideboard because this is really for traditional standard uh but i'm just trying it out in best of one here to see how it does i've got some ideas for other token decks that i'd like to try down the road uh and so we'll see maybe we can get a, a rehash of this later on or with some different color variations which i i've already like i said got some plans for that but We'll talk about it as we go through, guys, and hopefully we can get some wins. Again, I really do like the setup of this deck. Uh, it could be really, really fun. So let's jump in. Let's see how it goes right now. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, interesting hand. I'm not super sold on it, but we do have the Reckoner Bank Buster that can draw us some cards and give us something on turn three here. Uh, and uh, we can play it on turn two, draw on turn three, and then we've got plenty of stuff we can do on turn four. So we'll give it a shot. Um, not super uh optimistic about it but we do have all colors of mana as well which is obviously a pretty key aspect to any three color deck you do have to think about those kinds of things we'll go ahead and throw that bank buster down there and uh again this does draw us a card next turn if we just don't have another play looks like the opponent might not be doing super well on what they're trying to do either um well with the the fable of the mirror breaker i do think we go ahead and throw this down this is just such a good card to get going early. We can replace some of these lands in our hand if we see the need to, um, and maybe one of the chariots, we'll see. I do expect that the opponent, being on Orzhov, they're probably gonna have plenty of removal for us, um, but hopefully we can uh, make some stuff happen. Let's, let's throw those two back. Let's see what we draw. Interesting, okay. So definitely throwing the land down. Uh, now the question becomes, what do we want to do this turn? Uh, so the easy play is probably just to seek his chariot. Um, alternatively, we could go for showdown, but I don't really love that play. I think we do the Asika's Chariot maneuver. We already have the 2-2 down. Uh, and the question becomes, do we attack with this, knowing that they can probably do some crazy shenanigans? Um, I think we don't 
I really like the Bankbuster as a draw card engine, not that we necessarily need it. Worth noting, the Showdown kind of does a great job of replacing the Reckon Reckoner Bankbuster. In terms of drawing cards, obviously it doesn't have, uh, a, it's not a creature, but um, it does give us that option long term. So we'll see what this ends up doing. It looks like they are going to meat hook for two. Um, with that in mind, we are going to go ahead and crew this up. Uh, and what this does is just give us the blocker if we need it. Uh, if they happen to attack in with the Edgar, we can block and uh, just make sure that we're not going to lose a couple extra life for no reason. Um, I think we'll take the block. Let's try it. I do want to get rid of that Edgar, I think. Uh, it does come back, of course, later on. Um, but as for this turn, at least, we do have an out. So that's helpful. All right. Um, we do have the Outland Liberator, too, which can just straight up destroy any of what they're doing. Hmm. We do need to leave open one mana for this. So, okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead and crew this up. Um, let's attack in. We don't have a token to copy, sadly. Um... But I think I will go ahead and just blow this up now. Uh, I don't particularly want them to get Edgar back, you know what I mean? So I feel like this is an okay move. Um, it also gives us more options for next turn, so we've got plenty of stuff we can do. Um, and I, I just think getting this off the field and keeping it from returning is probably a, a good thing for us. Uh, now we'll see, this is going to be a tricky one to deal with because we don't have a wide breadth of creatures at the moment. And I will note, that's one thing I noticed in practice with this list, is it doesn't necessarily spit out tons of tokens, but once it gets going, you can really do a lot with it. So we got to hope we can do that. Um, and I'm curious too, if you use the reflection of Kiki Jiki on the Asika's Chariot, how does that work? Um, okay, uh, so we can Restoration to get a land for next turn, and then we can also just go ahead and do this. Alternatively... Yeah, that's about all we can do. Alternatively, we I guess we could showdown, but I'm not really confident in doing that, so I think I'd rather do it this way. This also sets us up quite well for later turns. We have one more planes. Um, all right, so I don't think we attack. Now, though, we've got plenty of mana for this showdown of the skulls, and that's kind of the key because, again, we want to really capitalize on that showdown if we can. Um, and having six mana, seven mana, probably eight. Um, but I mean, definitely eight available, but probably eight just off of the showdown. Uh, gives us a lot of opportunity to just play some stuff, uh, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and chances are we're going to discard this planes. All right, so here's the question. Do we think, since they're attacking, that they have a sweeper i'm gonna take the risk chances are they do and this is an unnecessary four that's a pretty big sign that they've got something maybe not um so we'll throw the counters here curious to see if these actually stick wow it does okay so we'll ditch the planes uh that allows us to bring any of these back um, and I actually think it's the Liberator. That allows us to kill the Meat Hook Massacre if we so choose, uh, which I think is worth it. Um, okay. So, let's move to attacks. Uh, we'll send one thing there, one thing there. What's the only other thing they could have? The Wandering Emperor would be pretty bad so let's send both this way just to be safe if they do have the wandering emperor i don't really want to just lose to that you know what i mean it could also well no this isn't a blood on the snow deck it doesn't look like i should say uh we'll auto pay this that's fine one thing to note we do have the layer of the hydra i'm kind of holding that back at the moment because i don't really want to throw it at them uh until i know they're kind of out of stuff to do if that makes sense um play that go ahead and play this now i know we're not leaving liberator up here um 
but I think this gives us some really good subsequent turns that I really want to kind of start capitalizing on these sagas. Um, we'll see. It may not work out, but we did kill the Loth, which is kind of interesting. Again, that's a surprising attack on their end. Um, I They had four mana available, so it could not have been a lot of things. It could have been a Path of Peril, and that would have been maybe it. Uh, they... I mean, Doomscar's too expensive, Farewell's too expensive. There's a lot of things that that doesn't work with, uh, which is great for us. <laughs> um, again, the showdown going to be really helpful here to hopefully uh, get some power out onto the field. We also are going to get a lot of flips this turn. <laughs> All right. So Restoration flips into a 3-4, which is amazing. Jogan also flips. Um... I'm going to discard both of these and draw two. I kind of just want more spells, you know? And that's a good one. All right. Let's throw this out for green. Uh, let's definitely play the Fable. Where do we want to throw the counters? Um, so I think we kind of want to split these up a little bit and encourage this to be the attacker. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, technically. So I'm going to pay one. doesn't really matter which, but again, we're just trying to get this, um, to where we can really go crazy. Let's do this. Uh, we'll throw a counter here just to, oh, that was kind of dumb, actually. <laughs> Should have thrown it on the restoration. Um, decline decline okay uh while we don't have a good attack this turn what we can do is at some point sacrifice this to kill the meat hook massacre i think that that's good um i'm leaving open that one mana just so we can do that i really should have put the counter on the architect that was just a mistake uh but at the very least we do have just a big seven seven that you know is gonna be kind of challenging for them to kill <laughs> And they don't attack. So these do have indestructible until the next turn. All right. So this is going to come into play. Uh, yes. I'm just going to throw one on it. Um, discard up to two cards. I think we discard a Liberator. Um, in hopes of that would be good. Okay. That's really great. Um... Do we have enough to do both? We do. Well, that's really helpful. Okay. So a counter here on the architect. Uh, we will decline. Let's throw the wandering emperor out. Um, throw this here. So we need to get this like a little bit stronger so it can actually attack in through these angels. That's kind of a, a tricky one for us. Um, and then this, based off of that and that. All right. So the yes, they do have indestructible stuff. Um, let's copy you. I'm going to decline to decline um i am gonna go ahead and sacrifice this to kill this though um i don't want them to get the meat hook triggers off of this so i think we need to go ahead and kill that this is a tricky game guys this is a long game um i'm feeling kind of okay like we've got a lot but they do just have sweepers i mean we see they've got meat hook massacres and whatnot so i'm curious to see how this actually goes they're double blocking just for the trample damage? Oh, they have reach. I am dumb. <laughs> ah, yep. Okay. Uh, that was my fault. Uh, yeah. Well, that was kind of silly. Um, but it is what it is. Very curious as to these blocks. Um... There we go. Okay. I was about to say. 
Um, all right, so we are going to clear the two angels from the field, and that's about it. That might have been a bad attack, but it's okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's still... How does it live? Did I... Oh, I gave it first strike. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my goodness, that was such a big game changer. That was huge. Uh, the fact that we gave it first strike mattered so much there. <laughs> I'm such a dumb person. Woo, we could have very easily died. Okay, cool. So we're gonna get a 1-1. That's fine. Great news, we can just like immediately kill Lol. Um, yeah, we definitely take that action. We'll put two on it. Kind of want it to get uh, at least four so we can trade with the Edgars of the world. Sorry for my dog barking. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. All right. Um, do this, I think. I honestly just think we go for them. I'm not that concerned with the uh, crackback from them at this point. I'm just doing this. <laughs> Screw it. I don't even care. Uh, we're doing the fun thing. Um, yes. How much do we have? I'll just do one. Just for this. Why not? I feel like we might as well, because again, I feel like at some point they're going to have sweepers, and I don't really want them to have that. I also know that they can obviously ultimate Loth next turn, um, but they're not attacking us next turn. That's not happening. <laughs> Um, and so I don't particularly care that much, and I'd rather just get their life total as low as we can before they can start gaining life back somehow. Um, with like Sorin or something along those lines, which I do expect them to have. Oh, and we just win anyway. Well, there we go! I didn't math it. We did it! <laughs> that was amazing! Well done, everybody. We did it. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Now, I do apologize. We may not get to uh, three games today because of how long this is going, um, but we're going to do the best we can to uh, get another win here. I do like this starting hand. We've got all mana that we need. We've got uh, a Prosperous Innkeeper, which is helpful. And honestly, the Cave of the Frost Dragon is a pretty good draw because now we can do that, then Lair of the Hydra. We get the Innkeeper down, uh, and we've got plenty of options. So seems pretty good. Interesting. I think we just Prosperous Innkeeper. Right. This Skyclave Apparition gets to trade up with the Voice of the Blessed, essentially. So that's actually a really good play for us. I know we get a hit here for three, but I kind of don't care. We have life gain with our Prosperous Innkeeper, so I think that that's okay. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and get that Voice of the Blessed out of there. Uh, Skyclave Apparition, really a good way to deal with the, uh, Voice of the Blessed because it's just so clean. They only get a 2-2 in response, and that's fine. Doesn't really matter. Um, they can attack in here. It really doesn't matter. Now they can cleanly attack in, though, uh, if they would like. That's pretty good. Um, no blocks, obviously. We just take the two. You can share it. Um, how do we need to do this? Is the trick. So we can Skyclave Apparition and leave up the Fateful Absence, which I think I think is the best call. And I think we take the Skyclave Apparition, uh, or the, the Luminarch Aspirant, excuse me. So now what we are able to do, I'm going to attack in here just to keep them away. Again, Righteous Valkyrie is always a scary threat. Got to keep them away from 27 life if we can help it. Wow, Adeline is very good. Okay. 
So now the question is, do I kill that? I think the answer is yes. I think we just go ahead and get rid of that before they get the token and start gaining more life back. Um, I think that's probably the right play. They still get an attack in for two this way, which does kind of suck, but it's really not the end of the world. All right. Uh, let's do this. I think the answer here is fairly clear. I think we just a Seeker's Chariot. Um, so this is going to spit out two, two, twos. That gives us some life gain back, and we get to attack in with the two Skyclave Apparitions. Just knock them down to 20 again. Uh, this also allows us to cleanly block the core celebrant. Um, while we don't trade with it, it is just a nice clean block that they really can't do too much about. Looks like they're gonna invest two mana in that clue token. That's a good sign for us that they don't have much. Uh, obviously they don't have a three drop, so that's good. Unfortunately, that is scary, um, but we'll see what we can do about it. Very interesting. A uh, little sequence of turns here. Okay. So we do have Cave of the Frost Dragon, which we can use to just keep the damage going, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad play. Alternatively, though, we can go ahead and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So let's get the Liberator down. Um, and I think I like that better. Just kind of keep things moving in the right direction. Also gaining ourselves a little bit of life back here. This is going to get very scary. Um, I actually think I hold on to the land. Is that correct? So we can discard it to the fable. Just to get an extra look next turn. I, I think that that might be important. Hopefully they can't gain too much life this turn. We might be able to, you know, double or triple block the uh, voice. Land is fine that is less fine all right so probably going to be taking a pretty big hit here um yeah so this now does have flying and vigilance which is terrifying i would love another skyclave apparition <laughs> um unfortunately can't do anything about this so we just take six that's fine they do still have another card in hand. I'm curious to know if that's just a land, which it very easily could be. I think we just throw both of these back. Um, restoration, huh? Okay. Um, what can we do? If anything. <laughs> um, we can activate this for one, two, three, four. That's not very good. Blah. We might just lose to Voice of the Blessed. Um, the fact that it has Vigilance is insane. We'll go ahead and pull the planes. Um, I mean, we can deal some damage, but it's really not anything worthwhile, so I'm not going to attack here. Ugh, that sucks. We can't deal with the 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> Uh, if we did have another Skyclave Apparition, and truth be told, if we draw another Skyclave Apparition in the next draw, we could get out of this. Um, and in fact, be in a pretty good position if we did, but... Resolve. Uh, obviously can't do much about this. Just take a nine. <laughs> More than nine. Do we just die? No, we're at one. Resolve all. Yes. Resolve. It resolves. I didn't block the 1-1. One, one. Why didn't I block the 1-1? One, one? That was so stupid. All right. Whatever. Let's talk about this deck. <laughs> all right, guys. So I know we only got a couple games in, but we're already sitting at 25 minutes and the next game could go very long as well. So I wanted to make sure we had a little bit of time that we can talk through this deck because there's some really good strengths to this and some glaring weaknesses. I think the most obvious weakness is what we demonstrated there uh, in the second game, which is if the opponent just gets to stick one of their big threats, all we really have are a lot of tokens until we flip like the Yugen whatever, uh, because we really don't have a lot of big threats. We got a lot of four fours if we can crew them, 
Uh, which is fine, but it's not anything in comparison to a 6-6, and in that case, like a 10-10 or 12-12, whatever it got to. So, uh, unfortunately, that's just something that you do have to keep in mind. We do have answers, we just happen to use them. I, I mean, and I felt like I needed to. I don't feel like that was a misplay, but I do think that uh, had we saved a Skyclave Apparition, we probably could have gotten in for a good bit, but we then would have had to have left, you know, a Luminarch Aspirin on the field, another uh, Voice of the Blessed, like things that we had to remove. So I don't feel bad that we did things in the wrong order. I just wish we had had like one more removal spell to be to be able to deal with that. But you know what? Regardless, I think this is a fun deck. I like token strategies in general. Uh, this one feels really well put together, really synergistic, and it does have a lot of tech and built-in resiliencies uh, in the fact that, you know, if the opponent sweeps as an example, um, <clears throat> you've got a lot of two-for-ones or extra value cards like Sagas that help you rebuild very quickly. So all in all, I do like the deck. I don't think it's tier one or anything, but it was a really fun one to play. Uh, and I do encourage you to try it. We'll probably take some other looks at decks like this in the near future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. But guys, thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again for some more standard gameplay video tomorrow. And do not forget, we have got a collection update video coming on Saturday with a challenge. Uh, so do uh, make sure you watch that. But guys, thank you so much. Love you all. Have a great day.